We're going to learn this morning that uh, through a man's life, through a king's life, he taught us a great, great lesson. And I want you to understand this this morning. I want you to listen this morning. Harry, I'm getting a ring. I want you to understand this this morning, okay? And I want you to listen very attentively because if you will apply these principles in your life, I guarantee you that they will help you. They will help you tremendously. We're going to be looking over in the Old Testament this morning, and we're going to be looking at a, a king. His name was Jehoshaphat. He was a great king, but he was in trouble in his life, and he's taught us some wonderful, wonderful principles. So follow along in your bulletin, if you will. The first thing we need to understand that when we're in trouble is we can use your voice, our voice, to gain access to the power you need to be victorious in the struggles of your life. The series that we're in is all about our mouth. Well, we've talked the first several weeks about the bad way of using our mouth. Well, this is a good way of using our mouth. The first thing we need to understand is we can use our voice to gain access to the power to be victorious in every single situation that we'll ever go through in life. Look, if you will, at Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. After this, the armies of the Moabites, Amorites, and the Mennonites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast, a large, a huge army from Eden is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. Jehoshaphat was very excited. Now, said he was happy because he was looking forward to the dance. Now, he was absolutely terrified by this news, and he begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judea to begin fasting. Now, look at what this scenario says to us. All right, he is in trouble because he just got word that he's about ready, and the children of Israel, Israel is about ready to be annihilated off, off the face of the map. All of the enemies of Jehoshaphat have gotten together. They have formed their armies together, and they are marching against him. The messenger came and shared with him, look, this is not just one army. This is not just two. A bunch of folks have gotten together, and they are coming against you. Now, Jehoshaphat was a king. He knew he had been through war after war after war. This wasn't any surprise to him, but it was a surprise to him that all of the enemies had gotten together. They had formed a pack, and they were coming against him. And he realized, he was a realist, he realized that unless something miraculously happened, that they were going to be just wiped out completely. So what he did was something that you and I need to do. First of all, he said he begged the Lord for guidance. Folks, he was smart. Okay? He was smart. And he taught us a lesson through this. That when we see obstacles, issues, mountains, circumstances in our life that we feel that are too big for us to handle. Have we ever been there? Are you facing any of those things today? The first thing we need to do is we need to get on our knees, use our mouth, and beg God for guidance. Amen. Beg God for wisdom. And understand, we need to use this time to get close to the Lord. Jehoshaphat, he begged God for guidance, and then he said, I want all of you around here. I want you to start fasting. Fasting is a way that we give up meals. Maybe you give up one meal. Maybe you give up two meals. Maybe you give up three meals. Whatever the Lord maybe will tell you. But it's a great way of just giving up something like a meal to get closer to the Lord. Use that time that you would ordinarily be eating that meal or meals and be in prayer. That's what Jehoshaphat is saying here. He's saying, listen, we're in a mess. And we need to understand something. We are not going to have victory here unless God gives us a miracle. It's just not going to happen. So we've got to get close to the Lord. We've all been there. We've all done that. Jehoshaphat was in a big, big battle. 
Look, if you would, at uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 2. It says, O our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about ready to attack us. He right away told God, listen, we're powerless. We can't do anything. Do you know this morning, my friends, that all of us are powerless without him? Do you know that none of us can have any victories this morning without Jesus Christ? Do you know that in the Lord and in the Lord alone comes victory in Jesus? Amen. Amen. Jehoshaphat said, you know, we are powerless against this army. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. The Bible tells us that we are to acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways and let him direct our paths. The greatest thing that you and I every morning, every moment of every single day, listen to me, is for us to acknowledge before the throne of God every moment of every day that we are incapable of leading our lives. We are incapable of making decisions. We are incapable of having victories in our life apart from Jesus Christ. And sometimes, my friends, he will make water come in your boat. Sometimes he will get your life and my life to the point where our boat in life is sinking so that we will know that in times like those, he is all we have and he is all we need. Amen. Amen. Folks, let me tell you, he is all about strengthening faith in our life. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what you've come through. I don't know what you're getting ready to go through. But I will tell you this. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. I don't care about what the modern day pastors are telling you today about the power of God. But I'm here to tell you today that he has not lost his power. The power of the blood of Jesus. The power of the blood of Jesus is just as real today to win anybody to Jesus that needs to be won. And the power of Jesus is just as powerful today for us to conquer any kind of issues, hurdles, obstacles that we'll ever, ever have in life. Jehoshaphat knew that. He got on his knees before the Lord and he says, Lord, I am hopeless without you. I have, we have got to have some answers. His only hope and our only hope is a miracle of God. Amen. The second thing is in your notes, he said his prayer was and he fought with words. And here's an interesting thing about this. When he prayed, he was giving an invitation to heaven to address something that was going on in his life. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. God is not going to intervene in your life in a helpful way unless you ask him to help you. Amen? Amen. He is going to stand there and he's going to wait for you and me to ask him to help. And what he does is he sits back and he crosses his arms many times, I believe, and he watches you and me push all the buttons in life that we can possibly push. He lets us completely exhaust ourselves with all of the little creative ideas that we come up with to solve our little old problems. He lets us go to everybody else and ask advice. He lets us go and think about all the little things that we can do to, create, to, to handle our problems. And then we finally get to the point of saying, and he gets us to the, finally to the point of saying, you know what, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray about it. Well, isn't that wonderful? Prayer. What a novel idea. When you and I pray, we are giving an invitation to our Heavenly Father, if we know Him as Lord and Savior, to the great and mighty awesome God, to the King of kings, to the Lord of lords, the creator of the universe, the Savior of our souls, the one that sent His Son to die for us. We're giving an invitation for the mighty King of kings to come and to do some differences in our life, to wage battle in our life against something that we cannot wage ourselves. Amen. Amen. Isn't that pretty good? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hey, we're giving an invitation to God. So what is prayer? Prayer is, a, is giving heavenly permission for a earthly intervention in our life. 
Prayer is giving, saying, Lord, I'm giving you permission. Jehoshaphat was saying, Lord, listen, I'm begging you. If you don't come through, I'm done. I am giving you permission right now to come in and take care of things. Because I know right now I am incapable of handling what's going on right now in my life and with the leadership. I am incapable. Folks, have you ever been there? We need to be there every moment of every single day. Amen? He didn't silently say that. He cried out. And what did he do in this prayer? Look at uh, verse, uh, <clears throat> verse 6, 2 Chronicles uh, 20. He prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone. Look what he said to God. You alone are the God who is in heaven. Now, do you think that God didn't know who he was? God knew who he was. Jehoshaphat wasn't saying anything to God that God didn't already know. But you notice that God didn't look at him and say, yeah, I already knew that. Why are you wasting your voice? Why are you telling me who I am? Don't you think I know who I am? I've always been here. No, he didn't back up and he didn't tell him anything. Jehoshaphat says, listen, you are the God that is in heaven. He didn't stop there. You are the ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful. You are mighty. No one can stand against you. Two things here. Listen, these are keys to prayer. Two things. He was reminding God of who he was. Because when he was reminding God of who he was... What he was actually saying was, God, I know who you are. Amen? Amen? Sometimes it's good, and all the time it's good, for us to remind God of who he is in us. Amen? Amen. What he was saying was he was reinforcing who God was in his life. He's saying, God, when I look at my situation today, here is what you have reminded me of, and I praise you of this because you know what? When I look at my issues, don't miss this this morning. When I look at my issues, here's what I, here's what I know. Here's what I know. You alone are the God of heaven. You are the ruler of all the kingdoms of earth. You're powerful and you're mighty. And you know something, when I look at what I'm going through, here's what I know. Nobody, nobody, nobody can stand against you. In order for defeat to come to us, my friends, it has to come through Jesus. And that ain't happening. As long as we're relying on him for the victory. When we rely on ourselves, we suffer defeat. But I'm here today to tell you that there is victory in Jesus. And that means victory 100% of the time. He is never, nor will he ever, let you and I suffer a defeat when we are right with him. It may seem like a defeat, but it isn't defeat. Because he is working behind the scenes in your life and in mine to accomplish something in our life that only he can accomplish. And you hold out in faith and don't let Satan mess with your faith today because listen, there is a victory that's going to come in your life. Don't give up. Keep praying in faith. He loves you with an everlasting love. He only wants the best for you. He doesn't want second best. He wants the best for you. Sometimes our waves in life and our mountains in life and our struggles and enemies that are coming against us looks like we're going to be crushed and we get down and we get discouraged. But listen, give those things over to the Lord. Let the Lord know how powerful he is and your life and what he's done in your life and let him know in faith that, Lord, you know what? I don't care how bleak, how dark, how things look this morning. I know that you are going to give me the victory in Jesus. I can't see it right now, but I know it's coming. Amen. 
Jehoshaphat, he didn't see the victory coming. The armies were still marching. But you know what? He knew that there was victory coming. He knew it. He knew that was happening. What was his prayer? His prayer was to remind God about who he was and also about what God had said. If you look at verses 7 and 8, it says, Oh, our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel alive were alive? God, don't you remember? Don't you remember? Children of Israel, don't you remember who God was? It looked like we couldn't inhabit this land. And what did he do for us? He did what nobody thought that he could do. He drove out everybody. You know why? Because he gave us this land. This land was ours. It wasn't theirs. It was ours. And God gave us a miracle. He gave us this land. Do you remember when the land looked like there was all kinds of giants? And we could not win. There was no way we could. But what did God do? Do you understand, folks, what we're saying, what we're talking about here? Jehoshaphat was taking God back to reminding God again what God had done for them, but also solidifying in his heart and solidifying in the the children of Israel what God had done for them in the past. And folks, sometimes you and I become very short-sighted. And the devil seeks to erase in our life what our history with God is. He seeks to erase what God has done in your life and my life. He seeks to give us amnesia about the victories that God has already done in our life. I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of God in my life, when I think about the victories, when I think about the miracles, when I think about the things that God has done for this pastor, that there is no way, There is no way that I could have ever had victory had it not been for the mighty power of God. That just brings joy and happiness to this pastor's soul. And folks, Jehoshaphat was saying, listen, I need a little joy today. And you know how I'm going to get it? I'm just going to talk about all the things that God's done. And he said, you did not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham, did you not? Your your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. So do you think for a moment that we're going to be defeated? No way. No way. I don't care what it looks like. I am not going to be defeated. Your people are not going to be defeated. You know why? Because you're God. I love that. Amen? Amen. Some people say, well, you know, it's 2023 and churches are not as powerful as they are, as they were. And, you know, it, uh, the Bible has lost its power and we got to go woke to get people's attention. We got to go woke to get uh, attendance and we got to do all these things and the church is in trouble. Let me tell you something. The church will never, ever lose his power. Because there's power in the name of my Jesus. Amen. Amen. They may push us. They may say we're old-fashioned. They may say we don't know what we're talking about. They may say, Pastor, you're getting old. Pastor, you know, old things don't work no more like they used to. I want to tell you something, you young whippersnapper. I want to tell you something, you wokest. I'll tell you this, I see lives change every single day and it's not because of the old mo- the modern junk that you're teaching, it's by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. My God still changes lives. You can keep rolling against all you want to around here. We have folks around here, I mean, that come against our church all the time. They say things about us on Facebook. They ain't got no sense, but they talk about us. But Jehoshaphat says, you know what, as for me and my God, I want to tell you, we got this thing handled. We got this handled. He introduced God to the problem that they were having, and he, when he did that, he also just solidified in his heart and the hearts of others what God was about ready to do. Number two, we are going to get through this message. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> in times like these, we need to remind God of his word. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 9. They said, 
Whenever we are faced with any calamity, such as war, plague, or famine, we can come, we can come, and we can stand in your presence. Whew. Woo! Whenever we're in trouble, trouble in your marriage, trouble in your finances, trouble in your job, trouble with your kids, trouble in your family, trouble with whatever's going on in your life. When we're in trouble, we can come to stand, not to waver, not to bend, not to bow, not to fall down. We can stand in the presence, the presence of a holy, mighty, awesome God. Woo! Man, if that don't get you excited this morning, you got problems. You and I, look at all the junk that's going on today. Look at all the people that say you can't, you can't, you can't. Listen, you can. I can come and stand in the presence of an almighty God. That is for me that will never, ever, ever be against me. When everybody tells you you can't, God says you can. When everybody says you're going down, God says you're going up. When everybody says you're sinking, you're saying, I can swim. When everybody's saying, I can't see any life preserver, God says, here you go. Woo, I'm telling you what. I'm just rocking and rolling this morning, just getting a hold of this. I really am. We stand in your presence where your name is honored. We can cry out to you and to save us, and you will turn off your hearing aid. No. You will hear us every time. Listen. How does he hear everybody? I don't know. He has selected hearing. Did you know that? He selected on your wave frequency and mine. And if we're clean before Jesus, if we're right with him, he hears us 24-7. You may think that your prayers aren't hitting home, but your prayers are hitting home. First thing you need to do before you pray is to ask yourself if you're right with God. If you regard iniquity in your heart, he's not going to hear you. But if you're right with God, keep praying. Well, pastor, wait a minute. I haven't had, God hasn't answered yet. Keep praying. Pastor, the army is still there. My issue is still there. Keep praying. I don't, I don't think that he's got, I've got his attention. Keep praying. What are you doing when you're praying? You are strengthening your faith every prayer that goes up. Satan's trying to tell you this morning your prayers aren't working. Keep praying. Cling to the principles of God's Word. What's the principles of God's Word? That He'll hear you. He's never going to let you down. Has He ever let you down? Has He always provided, provided all of your uh, needs according to His riches and glory? Did He not say that you could do all things through Him that strengthens you? Did He not say that you're more than a conqueror through Him that loved you and gave Himself for you? What I'm trying to say is keep on doing what you're doing. Pastor, people come to my office and say, Pastor, God hadn't answered my prayer. How long have you been praying? About 15 minutes. <laughs> or maybe they stretch it out and they say, 24 hours, Pastor. Pastor, that got to be a record. He hasn't answered yet. Why don't you try to pray for 48 hours? God's just trying to see how much you think about him. Amen. Amen. Again, that's what Jehoshaphat was doing. He wasn't telling God anything he didn't know, but he was, every time he was praying, he kept reinforcing and reinforcing and reinforcing who God really was in his life. He reminded God of his words. Let me share this with you this morning. What an encouragement God gives us here in point three. Praise is the most powerful weapon that we possess. Wow. 
2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. Look what this says. He said, listen, all people in Judah. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. A servant was telling him this. Do not be, what's the word? Afraid. What's the first thing that happens to us when we get in a mess most of the time? We get fearful. As you've heard me say many times, it is impossible to be fearful and to be faithful at the same time. Impossible. People say, well, pastor, pastor, i not worried about anything, but yet all you do is talk about how much you're worried. <laughs> pastor, I know that God could do it. And then all you talk about is, well, all the ways that God can't do it. It is impossible to pray in faith and to live in fear at the same time. Folks, I don't know what's around the corner in my life. Do you know what's around the corner in your life? You say, well, absolutely. I've got my, my, my little day planner right here on my smartphone, Pastor. Every time I have an appointment, I put it in my day planner. Well, bless your sweetheart. Next Friday, Pastor, I'm going to be here. In the, you don't know where you're going to be. Well, pa no, you don't know nothing. God's the only one that knows it, but I know one thing, that whatever happens in my life, God's got it. Amen. Amen? You know why? Because he loves me, and he only wants the best for me. I know that whatever happens in your life, he loves you because he only wants the best in your life. Amen? Amen. Jehoshaphat is saying, listen. We don't need to worry about anything. We, don't be discouraged by this mighty army. Don't be discouraged by what you see with your natural eyes. And I love this next part. For the battle is not yours, but God's. That's it. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going to face, the battle is not yours. It's God's. Pastor, you don't understand this difficulty. Give it to God. You remember two weeks ago when I shared with you about how we need to hand the ball off? Remember when I said that when the quarterback, he's a smart quarterback, he surveys the defense. He knows the defense. He sees it. And then the person up there in the box is calling the plays down person in the skybox. Down in today, they got those microphones in the helmets. The quarterback hears. Now that quarterback is supposed to do what that person upstairs is saying because that person upstairs sees that feel like nobody else. Hand the ball off. I see the defense. The best thing you can do is hand the ball off. Can you imagine how disappointed, how angry it must be to that person in that press box that's calling those plays down to that quarterback. If he says, hand the ball off, and that quarterback keeps the ball and gets sacked. I like football. If you're in my house on a, on a Sunday afternoon, my team's playing, which they normally lose. But anyway, <laughs> sometimes I get loud. Sometimes I get excited. Because I'm sitting there and I'm watching this on my big screen. And I'm watching my quarterback that sometimes, whatever. Anyway, he falls back in the pocket. And I watch these guys that are coming from the ends. And I'm sitting there and I'm yelling. And I'm saying, hand the ball off. Getting rid of the ball. Hand the ball off. Guess what? He doesn't do it. He holds the ball and he gets sacked. This person slams him and another person slams him. And you know what I'm saying? Stupid, stupid, stupid. I'm upset. Why? Because he didn't do what he should have done. I'm not saying God calls you stupid. I'm not, calling, I'm not saying God calls me stupid. But he's sitting there. 
at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. He sees the armies. He sees what's coming against. He sees our problems. He sees our issues. We have asked him, we've given him an invitation to come and intervene, and he has given us directives. He's told us what we need to do. He's told us the, the, call, the plays that we need to run in our life. Amen? He's told us. He's given us the game plan. And we don't do it. And we get sacked. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand today. But how many of y'all have ever been sacked in life? I told you not to raise your hand. <laughs> well, everybody y'all all know who you've been. You know, anyway, listen. Listen. We've been sacked. We're going to be sacked. It's going to happen, or we may be sacked right now. You know the reason you're sacked? You know the reason I'm sacked? It's because we didn't listen. Period. Oh, well, Pastor, you don't understand. It's because of my wife. No. <laughs> it's because of my husband. Mm -mm. You know, Pastor, my dog gets me in trouble. No. <laughs> Pastor, you know what? I used to be a whole lot tougher when it wasn't 2020. No. No. It's because you and I weren't listening to the plays. Jehoshaphat knew that he had to listen to the plays that God was giving him. And look at verse number 16 and 17. He says, tomorrow, march out against them. But you will not even need to fight. Now, I want to get this. He was not... Even able, he wasn't supposed to go out there and fight with bows and arrows and spears and cannons and whatever else they had back in the days. It says, take your positions. Go ahead and take your positions, okay? Like we're just going to march against them and then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid, don't be discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. And don't forget, the battle is not yours, it's his. How did they go out? What did they do when they were standing? I'm glad that you asked. Because what they did was, they went out, they stood, and what they did was, they started praising the name of Jesus. Verse 18, 2 Chronicles 20. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judea and Jerusalem did the same. And they started worshiping. They started praising the name of Jesus. Now get this. Now don't, don't lose me here. All right? Don't lose me. They started praising Jesus before they had won the war. Amen? They took their positions. They took their positions. The army could see that they had taken their positions. They didn't run. They didn't hide. They didn't curl up in a ball and say, I don't know how I'm going to do this in fear. They didn't do any of that. They took the positions of victory. They started a victory lap before they had victory. They took their positions because God told them to take their positions. Jehoshaphat had reminded the people I'm not telling you to do this. God, the one that's done it before in your life over and over and over and over again. Is this sinking in this morning? I'm telling you that God has told you and told me, take your positions. Whew. We're about ready to have a time. They took their positions. Can you imagine the armies coming against them? Seeing these folks, these children of Israel taking their positions. 
They ain't got no bows like this. They haven't even got their shields up. They don't have their swords up. They don't have nothing. They ain't cannons, whatever they had. They're not, and they ain't have anything ready. They must have thought, them a bunch of idiots. We're about ready to slaughter them. No, 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 no. Children of Israel and Jehoshaphat saw something. They knew something that those armies didn't know. And they got there and they started praising Jesus before they had the victory. Folks, that is a principle this morning that I want you to hear and I want you to hear very, very well. You don't praise God after the victory. You praise God before the victory. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. They stood in faith. They knew that victory was coming. Why? They stood not in their power. They stood in the power of an almighty God. Whatever your issues are today, whatever they're going to be tomorrow, you and I get up on the mountain and let's start praising the name of Jesus. Amen. He should be hearing praise from your lips, not belly aching. He should hear from us, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do this, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There is victory in Jesus. I can see it right now. I can see, I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but I know the light's coming. Lord, I know it's coming because you're never late. You're an on time God. They were praying in faith. Faith is the evidence of things that we cannot see. What does faith do, folks? It takes care of our issues. It defeats our enemy. It believes and it brings us out of the bondage. And God wants us to claim our victories right here and right now. Your enemies and my enemies cannot withstand your praise. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 20 and 21. Early the next morning, the armies of Judea went out into the wilderness. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judea and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting, the people and the king appointed singers <laughs> to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man. Satan thinks he has you down. You just start singing. Now, I know that most of y'all, including me, can't sing worth a lick. Say, Pastor, how do you know that? Because I've stood behind you. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. He don't care how if you can hit a tune or not. All he wants is a holy grunt out of you. I mean, what was the last time you just marched around your problems? Here's your problem. Here's your issue. You stood up. You quit belly aching. You quit complaining. <laughs> you quit crying over it. You quit being fearful over it. And just like the old walls of Jericho, you just started walking around that thing. And you just started praising the name of Jesus. I mean, when they went out, they sang. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Pastor. These armies are still out there. They're singing. Pastor, well, wait a minute. God hadn't given the victory. They were singing. When does God hear your singing? Does he hear it after the fact or does he hear it before? <laughs> Amen? Amen? There's anybody in this room that can sing after the battle, after the victory. But how many of us can sing before the victory? 
That's what he's looking for. Where's your song this morning? Where's your praise this morning? Amen? Hey, Psalms chapter 22, verse 3. Yet you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18. Violence will disappear from your land, the, the land of desolation and destruction. Of the, of the war will end salvation when we praise the Lord, will surround you like city walls. And praise will be on the lips of all who enter there. What is praise? Let me tell you from my heart to yours what praise is. Listen to what praise is. Praise is a visual expression of worship. Visual expression of worship. Folks, when Jesus is in your soul, when he brings joy to your heart, he doesn't want to burp. He doesn't want to burp. He wants you to open up your mouth and give him a shout. You say, well, pastor, I am not a Pentecostal. <laughs> I didn't ask you that. And that's, what not, that's not what God's asking. God's just simply asking you, are you a Christian? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Some of y'all got really close this morning. You really did. I watched some of you. Sebastian and them are up here singing and praising the Lord, and some of y'all got moving just a tad, not much. <laughs> you didn't lose your baptizeity. <laughs> Started moving along. Some of y'all went. <laughs> got real close. Real close. I'm proud of y'all. Some of y'all are really, really working hard at it. But others of you went, Woo! And others of you went, Yippee! You say, do I have to do that to praise the Lord? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying this. You shouldn't get more excited at a dadgum football game than you, get about, than you should be about what Jesus has done for you. Amen. I would love for this congregation just to get loose in Jesus. I'm serious. Let out a couple of notches of your belt. Men, you ain't faking any of the ladies. They already know you're fat. Listen. Your slim matics ain't working. Just let go and let Jesus. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Say, Pastor, that's scary. No. When, listen, when, when you get to heaven, a lot of y'all going to need practice. Because you ain't practice enough on earth. You can't praise Jesus and be fearful and be unbelieving and unfaithful at the same time. Jesus wants to hear cheer out of your life. Here's our battle cry, and I'm stopping. You say, it's about time. Listen. <laughs> if I can find my verse, I'm going to stop. Hold on here. Psalms chapter 34, verses 1 through 3. Look what it goes. This is our battle cry right here. I will bless the Lord when things are going good in my life. No. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise my song of praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. No matter what. No matter what. I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to be a modern day Job. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. He's speaking to some of y'all because some of y'all, the only time you praise the Lord is when things are going right. My soul will make its boast. I'm going to talk about him. I'm going to praise him. 
I am going to lift up my voice and I'm going to boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and I'm going to rejoice. Exalt the Lord. I want you, Point Church family, to exalt the Lord God with me this morning. I want us to come into the house of praise. I want us to come in when Sebastian and this band up here, when these folks are singing their hearts out, I want to tell you what. I want to get a smile on your face. I want you to start to shake, and I want you to start to move, and I want you to get your hands a moving, and I want you to start praising the name of Jesus. And lay your stuff right down here at the altar, and look, when you get up from the altar, you say, yeah! I ain't heard that in 12 years here. Some of y'all might need recitation after that. I don't know. Recitation, I should say. Recitations when they do something else. Exalt the Lord with me and let's exalt his name together. The Lord is looking for the Point Church family to start exalting his name together. Folks, I am not in any way, shape, or form making light of what you have been through, what you're going through, or what you're going to go through. I am simply God's messenger this morning to tell you that I don't care what you've been through, what you're going through, or what you're going to go through. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The blood has not lost its power. The quickest thing you and I can do is to send an SOS. To let him know who he is and what he's done. And to claim the scriptures and put the devil on the run. A lot of us spend time glorifying Satan when we should be glorifying the Lord. You and I are glorifying Satan this morning if we are admitting defeat. If we're fearful. If we have just packed up our tent. We're not glorifying the Lord. We're bringing glory to somebody we shouldn't be bringing glory to. Amen. Amen. Let's like Jehoshaphat and the armies. Let's stand this morning and let's say, I see my issue. I see my mountain. I see the enemy. Satan, I know what you're doing, trying to do to me. But you know what? I want you to see me this morning. I'm standing. I'm standing in the power of Jesus. And you know what? I'm not only standing. I'm singing, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So let's stand.